Hello everyone, welcome to this new lecture in this modern C++ course. My name is Rodrigo and I will be the other teacher of this course. Today we are going to talk about the basic syntax of C++ and we will start with what we call the legals. So the rules about what you can and you cannot do in C++ and we also will give you a few definitions and some also some terminology that we will use throughout the course. So this will not give you any coding expertise that you will rather gain by doing. So we'll, we are we like this concept of learning by doing. So let's you have to code, but it's good to a good starting point. So we all know what we're talking about and we all the same use the same words. So let's start with some definitions. For example, what's a C++ program, which is basically a sequence of text files, the .hpp and .cpp files, source and header files, and that contain declarations. Once we compile our program, these declarations will be executed when the implementation calls the main function. So let's continue. What we call keywords, or what are keywords in C++, are uh, words which have a special meaning that we cannot use as identifiers because they are reserved for the language itself. Um, like const, auto, friend, false, and there are more examples about that. The way of making comments in C++ is, for example, by using these two bars to comment one line, or we can also use, for example, this block. So with this slash and star, we can comment a whole block. Then there are also some escape sequences like for example this slash n character, that is the new line character, which is also somehow a keyword. So what's uh, another definition, what's an entity C++? In this case are values, objects, references, functions, and the list continues, except from the uh, macros that we will not cover in this course, so don't worry about that. So we have as um, different entities, we have values like like this float value, for example, we also have objects like this string, namespaces, functions, and yeah, a reference entity, and the list continues. So again, this is chart, those are just uh, definitions. So what's a declaration in C++? Uh, a declaration, as the, <laughs> the slide says, may introduce entities and associate them with names. And so when we define the properties of the so throughout the declaration when we define all the properties we say that we are defining this function so here in this case we just introduce a new entity called foo here also a function called my func but here since we are providing all the properties we say that we are defining this fun this great function now let's talk about what's what are the definitions so the definitions of functions usually include statements and different expressions. So as you can see here, this is statement, statement, expressions. So they can include uh, yeah, different sequence of statements and expressions. And this will tell, will specify how the computation is performed. So it's important to know that all the the statements must end with a semicolon, and uh, the, the language requires that. Actually, all this notation that we are having here, all the spaces, the indentation, are not completely necessary. We could just rather everything in the same line uh, with if we respect these semicolons, but then the code will not be very readable. So it's, it's also nice to keep some format. So uh, the names in a program are associated with the declarations that introduce them, as we said before. So uh, the important thing here is that the names and uh, that we associate to the variables, for example, are only valid within the scope. What the scope? The scope is what's between these two angular bra uh, these two brackets. So here the scope begins and here it ends. So this variable f bar f1 only lives within this scope. So if we want to reference it outside it will not be possible because it's not created and but it, we can also create it there because as you can see this is so this variable only lives in this scope outside of it the this variable is not declared at all 
So the, we have different types in C++ for everything, for objects, references, functions, um, and they are fundamental compound or could be even user-defined. So we have different examples here, like float, which is a fundamental type. We have also booleans, and we can have like different um, user-defined user types that so that we can use in C++. And it's important to know that we need the type for all of these, for the functions, for, for the variables, for the expressions, because C++ is a strongly typed language. So let's start a bit more in near the, what we will use, or the program itself. So what's a variable? And basically, as the definition says, all the declared objects and declared references are variables, except for the non-static non -static data members that we will cover further in, in, another, in the class um, about classes. Uh, but again, we have there are different variables of different types. For example, foo, for example, uh, which is an integer, for example, non staff, which is a boolean. Those are the variables, and the name they add with an identifier that um, associates them. So identifiers again are um, so sequences of digits or just a string, which should not start with a digit, and they are. So this is what you, we use to references to reference like variables, functions, etc. Uh, so here we have different examples. It's worth noticing that the only invalid one is this one because it starts with a digit, but the rest of them are all valid. So it's also important to note that, for example, these two the identifiers are different because the s at the beginning is uppercase in this case, and here is lowercase. So they will ref they will be different names. So it's important to try to keep some consistency while, while programming, so you don't get in these confusions. And you can also use as long um, identifiers as you want, but maybe your code will not be very readable in that case. Okay, this is a list of all the keywords of the, of the C++ language. Don't worry, this will get highlighted most probably, or you will uh, get the, the error but you should avoid using these, um, these keywords. Okay, continuing a bit more, more near programming. Now, what are the expressions, which are operators and operands that specify some computation, which will be, for example, as they say, assignments, increment, decrement, arithmetic operations, logical operations, comparisons, among others. And you will start using them as, as soon as you start programming, you will start realizing that you need them so you you can always check the reference to know which one is the one you can you want to use okay this is more or less the basic definitions and structures in in, in the c++ language let's go now about the syntax of the con some control structures let's start with the if statement this is mainly to focus on the syntax of this if statement because we expect that you already know. So this is not the programming course, but rather a C++ course. So you, we expect that you should know how an if statement works. The idea is just here to show you the syntax. So yeah, we have a statement. When the statement is true, we execute what's in, in the first scope. And then we have an else, another statement. And we have the, the else statement, which basically uh, will allow us to execute something that didn't um, if the other statements were false. So when when we have a lot of if else statements, we can replace that with a switch. In this case, the statement itself is um, an int or an enum value, and we will iterate over, over it uh, depending on its value. So it's important to include this break um, to exit this block. So let's say that it has this const value one if we do not include this break it will continue executing the rest of the cases so it's important to put this break and this default argument um, default value in case that none of them are covered a naive way of using this will be for example 
to create the, an integer which is a variable called color in this case which can take the which we will use to describe one two three as red green and blue and then we can do a switch depending on the color we will have uh, different behaviors the problem with this is that we are not so a good practice here is that we are calling color so to the variable so we are saying what what it means but what we are not doing is restricting the usage so if for example here we assign color 4 then it will enter through this switch statement and will not print any of those cases because it's not one two or three also we need a bunch of comments here to to tell the user what our code is doing so this is not very scalable and not very maintainable and yeah so if we have a four we don't know what meaning that has so instead we can use like a c plus plus style switch statement in which we create um we can create an enum class so we specify here which values this can take and then when we want to access or assign a value, we just have to assign uh, exactly the color we want. So in this case, we cannot assign number four to this to this variable, or we cannot assign RGB colon colon violet because this is not possible and we'll have a compilation error. So in this case, we're using the compilator uh, to help us while building the program. And also whenever we see in this switch, we see, okay, color red, we know already what's happening there and we don't have to rely on comments to say okay one means red two means blue for example so this is a good practice and you should try to start using them to use the compiler in your favor let's say so again another matter of syntax the while the while loop which will um, execute something when the condition is true uh, so usually, yeah, as we can see in the second example, which when whenever the condition changes, the the loop gets we get up uh, out of the loop, and this is used when we don't know the number of iterations. And yeah, again, it's easy to do a, an endless loop because the condition is never changed. However, when you know how how many iterations you want, you can use a for loop. Uh, again, this is about syntax. We, ha we have to specify here the initial condition, the end condition, and how you want to, we want to increment this, in this case, this auxiliary variable. And so this will happen count number of times. So here it's important to notice that the C++ for loops are fast. So don't be worried about using them. When, so it's less flexible than the while because you need to know in advance how many iterations you want to do, but it's fast. So whenever you know, don't put the while and then a counter, rather use a for loop if you already know. And in uh, there, there is another way of iterating which is with this range loop or a for each loop in other languages is called. So for example, when we have an array, uh, we can iterate over all the elements of that array. For example, if we have 10 elements, we can always uh, iterate over all the elements. So basically for all the values in the container, which could be the array, we will execute something and we will have in this variable value the exactly for example the first element and the second so we we can uh, easily work when we want to iterate instead of adding uh, iterate the content a uh, container instead of just using a, an auxiliary variable so in C17 that's why we mainly use uh, this standard there is a similarity or an easy so so far uh, one of the things that stop people for, from using C++ is the apart from the fact that you have to compile it uh, and sometimes there are some problems in the compilation process that's, that's why we do uh, we put that much emphasis in the in the build and tool class and tools class um, but also is the syntax so lately C++ have been trying to be more friendly in the syntax and they have been creating for example something very similar to, to Python as we can see down here and so they, it has some 
different things, but in the end, the for loop itself, we are just iterating over the keys and values of this dictionary, and then we just can access it. So it's, as you can see, it's very similar to Python. Yeah, it has some overhead, some other um, syntax, but in the end, it's the same usage. And that's something that is improving every time in C++. But, spoiler alert, too, um, this is 15 times faster. So that's something to take into account. And again, as we said before, for loops are fast, use them. Uh, okay, another way of exiting. Uh, so whenever we create a loop, we can exit or create some discontinuities in it by break, so which will exit the loop, like in this case, uh, whenever the if, uh, is if the statement inside the if closure is false, we will break and we will exit this while loop and we can continue. This means, for example, we have a, a lot of code and we want to only execute it when certain condition is, is reached. So we will execute the first part of the loop, then we will reach uh, this, let's say, we'll check this condition and then we can, we can continue. This means a skip the rest of the of the for loop or the while loop until the next um, so skip that that other part and start again from the beginning let's dive in the building types of the c++ language which are basically similar to other languages like boolean that can take true or false characters integers floats among others also we have arrays which in which we have to specify the type and the number of elements and we have automatic type, de type deduction in which the compiler will choose for you for us the correct type of the variable like for example here we are forcing we are forcing this variable to be a float with this f at the end so the compiler already knows what's the type of that variable so Characters, integers, and floating points, as it says there, are arithmetic types, and we per can perform uh, comparisons. We can increment and decrement with a plus equal or minus minus equal. So those are all operations, and we can perform all these three types of data. But we should avoid comparing the equality between two floating types. Uh, there is examples on the internet, you can check that. But it's important mm, to avoid it. So additional operations uh, in the, for example, in the boolean type, we can do or and or not operations. Like in this example, is happy when no, is not hungry and is warm or is rich. And yeah, for example, for integer uh, variables, we can also perform uh, integer division, modulo division, and increment and decrement. But remember not to overuse this because, for example, here if we give you this uh, this expression it's highly unlikely that you will guess what's happening there so don't ever use it just uh, keep it simple another cool feature of c++ is how to handle strings which is a bit tricky usually in c codes and that we always see in the assignment so this is an example of a c style string management in which instead of just declaring a string variable, we have an array of, char of characters, as you can see here. And yeah, and then this is an example in which we will try to copy the source um, string to the desk string. So let's open VS Code. Let's check this example. So we, what we are basically trying to do here, we create this copy this string that we want to copy in this this string um, so if we compile it so there's no problems but let's see what happens when we execute it so we can see that okay the first thing we we check is what's the source string which is correct, is copy this. Then what we have in the dest string is also copy this. But even though we have declared that this uh, string should be const, when we check afterwards, this is actually not true. So actually this, now the string 
has this contact this and this is an unexpected behavior so this is somehow a way of encouraging you to use the C++ string instead of dealing with the C style strings that we see very often and it's often in the internet when you, you will you want to find uh, some solutions uh, furthermore if we compile this using uh, optim and we want to op so we enable optimization to optimize our code and we compile this there is no problem so so far we think that the code is safe but when we try to execute it we get the core dump so you can investigate why this overflow is happening but this is an unexpected behavior so we would like to avoid that and you should also stick to the C++ strings which are super cool and super easy to use so as you can see here we have to include the string header to be able to use it and we just declare one, uh, one string and then we create the second one and we just copy them with the with assignment operator and then we can check here what's happening and also this building type has um, this this sorry this type also have some other properties or some other functionalities that we can leverage for example to check if the string is empty so that's already implemented for us we don't have to to check for the elements in the array because this is again now a string and it's not an array of characters so if we instead execute this code that I, so this is basically the same as the slide so again we create here the the variable the string source with this string copy this and then we create the second string called dest which uh, in which we will copy the content of source so now I mean, this will be hopefully the expected behavior. We just will compile the string.cpp file. And now when we execute, when we execute it, we have the expected behavior. Not, not as before, as we, as we saw here, in which we had, in the end, this const string was not constant at all, and the, the content was changed. So remember, use C++ strings, which are super cool, super easy to use, and will save you a lot of headaches. Okay, let's continue with what we call variables. So again, uh, C++ is a strongly uh, typed language. So every time we want to declare a variable, we should include the type of it. And it's also a good practice to initialize your variables, because otherwise you don't know what's the what's the state of that variable when you want to use it and again so all the variables have must have a type and they cannot change their type over time as in other languages so when naming a variable again this is an identifier so you can put the name you want but a good practice is to put the meaningful name to show what the variable refers to also uh, you can use the the name you want so it doesn't matter how long it is just for reading purposes, it would be nice to not have a, a name that occupies the whole screen. Don't include the type and don't use negation. So just express what's happening with the variable in the name itself. And you can follow some style so you can uh, identify if, the, if this is a variable or not throughout the whole code. Um, Google styles to use snake case. You can take it. It's uh, it's useful, so you can always know without checking the implementation or looking where it's declared, you can see that it's a, it's a variable. And again, the identifiers, the identifiers in C++ are case sensitive, so avoid, uh, tr try to use the same to be consistent, so you will uh, avoid running into errors because you, the variable is not defined because you use a, a lowercase or an, an uppercase um, character. Again, as we mentioned before, the concept of scope is always very important in C++. So again, what's a scope? It, the, the scope starts with this angular bracket and ends with this another angular bracket. In this case, this is the main scope. Um, and the variables belong to the scope where they, where they are declared. And they die when the scope dies. So in this case, for this another float variable this variable it only exists within this scope 
So if we want to access it outside of it, we will not be able to do it because it died. In when this when this angular bracket was reached, this variable died. So we cannot access it. Since um, this uh, second scope is nested in the main scope, we can access in this inner one, we can access this some float, but outside, uh, but not the opposite. So since another float was created in this inner scope, we cannot access it outside. So remember um, that scopes are very important. The same is when you declare a function, a function and you create variables inside the, this function, they will die when the the end of, when we reach the end of the scope or the return, uh, then these value these variables will die. So they will not. You can reuse the name. That's why, for example, in the for loops, when we do for i equals zero and then we use that to iterate after that for loop, we can create another for loop with the same variable because this variable dies after um, the for loop. So it dies when the end of the scope is reached. Again. Um, what well, there are some operations we can do with variables. In this case, we can declare that it's const uh, to avoid that the user change its value. And so, if we try to do it, the compiler, uh, the compiler will throw an error saying, "Okay, this should be const," and you are trying to modify it. Google style says that you should use camel case and a k at the beginning. Again, this is just a good practice so whenever you see these camel case uh, variables with a k at the beginning you are sure that it's it's uh, about uh, we're talking about the constant variable and you don't have to look for it so and a good practice when you don't know if you're going to modify it or not is to always set variables as const so the type in this case is not only for example float but the type is rather const float so the type is the full, so it's both words. Um, so yeah, if when you don't know what you are going to do with a variable, you just declare it const, and then if you realize that you have to to modify it, you will change it afterwards. But this will uh, avoid you uh, a lot of headaches when when running when implementing your code. We also have some very important concept, which is references. So references is a way, let's say it's a fast way of accessing a variable without copying it. So remember this, this is very important. I, I will say it again. So it's a faster way of accessing the same variable, avoiding copying data. So uh, in this case, as I said before, the, the type is, so the, the references have to have the same type. So in this case, if this original variable is a float, I have to create a reference to float. If, if the reference is an integer, I will have to create a reference to an integer, otherwise I will not be able to create this reference. And whenever I change the reference, I will also change the original value, uh, variable. So uh, it's, a, it's a, again a smart, and smart way of dealing with it. So when we create a Console variable, what we avoid is to modify this the original uh, variable. For example, we create this num variable that we define as we, we initialize with the value of 42, and then we create two references. One is just um, an integer reference, but we can also create, and that's what we're doing here, a const reference to it. So in this case, when we so you can try this example it's rather easy to to follow and to execute when whenever you change the this uh, reference you are also changing the variable itself so if you execute this you will check that ref and num and kref they both have the same value and whenever we we change the variable itself so here we change the reference and here we change the variable and the same uh, so we are also changing all of them the problem, if you run this, is that you will not be able to change the kref because this is a constant reference, so it's a way of avoiding changing your data. For example, if you want to uh, execute, to pass an argument to a function and you don't want the function to change it, you can pass a const reference, so you are sure that even though your, um, your variable is not const, this function will not be able to change it. And if 
the function tries to change it, the compiler will throw an error saying that this reference is constant and you cannot change it. Let's move now into C++ strings. When we do this include IO stream, we are able to use this library, uh, this uh, functionality, which is part of the standard library, which allow us to bring things into the standard output, into the uh, standard output error, and that allows us also to uh, ask for data with a standard input. So this is the same example that we saw in the first lecture. And yeah, we can basically print something in the standard output, then ask for some information in the standard input, which in this case will be the keyboard. Then we can output something again in the standard output, and whenever there is an error, we can, we can use the standard output error. So, so far, this is what we have seen, the standard output, standard error output, and the standard input. And we can also uh, play or work with uh, files using file streams. And another type of stream that we haven't seen before are the string streams that allows us to combine different types of uh, different types, like in integers, doubles, and also to break up strings in different into in, in different variables. So there is a example that is using what what is like the C style programming, which I would recommend you to post this video and check if you can understand what's happening here and so as you can see it's quite hard to understand what's happening there is a for loop a, a while loop there and we are using some functions so this is again c++ code but using only um, c, c functions and this is a bit of hard to know what's happening so we can see here what's happening that is basically we have this file name which is this string which uh, has as first part a number and then the extension. And what we want to obtain in the end is divide this uh, file name into this integer number and the, the extension. So we can check that in this example. So again, this is the same example as the slide. And what we are going to, to check is let me clear this we will compile it and we will run it, run it so what you can see here we are printing uh, in this case first the the integer value and the extension but you can see that we have 00205 so the two zeros at the beginning shows us that this is not the an integer value but rather a string we, can all, we could always convert this string to an integer value, but this is an extra step. And if you imagine when accessing a, a folder, you, you, we want to iterate over all these files and we know already the file, uh, the file name, we know that it's an integer, so we can perform some operations there, or maybe a timestamp, and we want it to be uh, a number. So C++ allows us to do something much easier or much easier to understand. So let's, again, check the, I will just highlight here, what is happening in this case. Again, we are creating the string file name just uh, to populate this example. And in this case, we'll say, okay, I will want to split this into two uh, different variables. One will be an integer, which is for the number, and then the other will be the extension, which will be a string. So we want this .txt. And the only thing we have to do is to use this syntax uh, to split the file name into an integer and a string. So if we run this example, let me open it. What, yeah, again, this is the same sample, uh, the, the same example as the slide. When we compile it and run it, we can see now that the number, this num, is now an integer value. So it's not, it's not a string. So in this case, we, are, we have the expected behavior, the, the behavior that we, that we want. We don't want this to be a string, but rather uh, a, an integer. So, and this, as you can see, when we compare both examples, here we only have one line of code to do this. And even if you don't know C++, you can somehow um, 
know what's happening here because it's pretty straightforward we just we just put the the file name we will split it we will somehow divide it into these uh, two variables one is an integer the other is a string and compared with this it's a much simpler notation and much easier to follow so i will recommend you to use this every time you need because this will uh, make your code more readable and more easy to follow and to maintain because if for example we want to change the position of number and extension if our file name change its um, its shape or the the how how it's built then we can easily uh, change these statements and we don't have to check a lot of patterns like we're doing in this other example so be aware that there is an easier way of doing it and when looking on the internet for um, how to perform some operations be aware that if you see something like this it's rather a c code that will run in c plus plus but we advise you not to use it and the last part of this lecture is about how you call your your program once you created your binary you and you want to so in, in the previous example we were creating the the binary and then asking through the standard output, the user to input something, but maybe you, we already want to execute this binary with some parameters. So to do that, we have to, when we declare the function main, we have to ask for these two arguments, which is argc and argv. argc is the number of input parameters and argv is an array um, of strings that will give all the parameters that we pass into the, into the function. So by default, the, there is one argument which is the the binary path how you execute the the file but you can also add others so in this example that i will run um, now to the code so input params so what we are doing here is okay again declaring our main function which will take uh, these arguments that will they, they will get populated when we execute the binary so the first and um, the first argument will always be the program and then we are here listing all the arguments okay so let's compile this program And we see that when we run this example, we have one parameter, which is basically how we executed the, the program. So it's argv0, so the element 0 of this array is the binary path. We can also, so we see that we are in temp dot, uh, slash cpp. So I could also execute this, type in the full path. And now the parameter is the full path that I, how I executed this program. But I can also add some other arguments, like for example, one, two, three, four, five. And these are the ones that occupy the other positions in the array. So as you can see, the first parameter is always how I execute the, the binary. And then the others, so they are all strings. So you can see that, for example, if I here put 0, 5, the fifth argument is 0, 5. So these are all strings and are the other arguments that you pass to your binary. So remember, whenever you want to execute a program and also include some uh, and pass some arguments when you are executing the binary, you should include these two arguments as uh, in the main function. And then when you execute it, you can pass whatever value you want. Then you, you can check how many arguments you have and uh, if the type of the argument. So you can then play a bit with it and decide what to do. Uh, with the arguments you have, but this is a way of basically playing with the input parameters. Here are the references. As always, CPP reference is the main source of information whenever you want to find out something. With this, we reach the end of the lecture. Again, this was it was not a very practical lecture, so you haven't done we haven't done much coding, which you will have to do to learn. Again, our philosophy is learning by doing. So I'm looking forward for the following lectures in which we will deep, uh, go much deeper into the code itself and some good practices, some coding. 
today was mostly about some vocabulary and some definitions. So I hope that either way you enjoyed the lecture and I'm looking forward to see you in the next one. Thank you very much.